So we're here to talk about Open RAN. This is a big topic with lots of potential. I'm here with uh, Constantine from Juniper Networks. Constantine, great to see you. Um, why uh, is Juniper active in Open RAN? Hi, Gabriele. Good to see you too. Um, that's a good question. Well, Juniper has been a leader in high perform performance networking, uh, focusing on delivering SLA in very complex networking environments. Now, in the world of 5G now, we have a new opportunity to really stretch the SLA and the SLOs across uh, the infrastructure, in an immense infrastructure, highly distributed infrastructure, all the way through the airwaves to the devices, right? Whether these are IoT devices or uh, smartphones, uh, smart cars, whatever. And Oran gives us that opportunity because uh, with the disaggregation, the software-driven radio, uh, think of the radio intelligent controller as the operating system of the, of the RAN. Uh, this is a greenfield opportunity. Uh, I believe that uh, with the moves that Juniper did, with the acquisition of Netia, perhaps the most uh, innovative solution of the radio intelligent controller in the market today, we are now in a strong position to really bring the innovations that Juniper is known for uh, across uh, through the radio, as I said, uh, and deliver uh, strong SLAs to 5G devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, can, I think that's a great point about bringing across, you know, expertise and knowledge from from other domains where where there's really been a focus on performance and SLA and programmability, determinism, everything like that. So this um this uh, RIC, this RAN intelligent controller product, um, that's a kind of key part of the ORAN architecture. What are you kind of expecting that to to deliver for for operators? Right. Um, I like to call the radio intelligent controller the operating system of the new radio disaggregated radio architecture, right? And if we think about it um, as such, which I believe it is, then uh, we can start thinking about the applications we can run on the rig, right? Uh, essentially, uh, Oran specifies APIs on the DU side that allows us to hook into the low level uh, Mac layer scheduler and be able to modulate how resources over the spec, over the air, are allocated to competing flows, competing users, competing slices. Uh, and therefore, uh, using intelligence, real time intelligence about how users behave, how the radio addresses demand, um, we can modulate resource allocation and deliver strong SLA, right? So Juniper is known for uh, its transport networks. Actually, it foresaw the need to uh, address some of the use cases of 5G, in particular network slicing. And today, Juniper supports network slicing across all of its transport products, right? So this was a natural evolution for us to move into a greenfield opportunity on the radio and provide applications that address everything from the well-known SON type of optimizations to uh, new capabilities in the radio that have to do with very uh, fine-grained smart admission control, uh, network slice, SLA, assurance, uh, strong visibility, you know, uh, that uh, allows us to hook uh, ML, AI type of applications and provide opportunities not just to do extreme optimization from the device perspective, from the network perspective, but also to open up opportunities for our customers, our operator customers, to monetize, you know, the, the, the you know, investment they have in the radios by offering new applications like spectrum sharing, mm -hmm. massive MIME optimization, and on and on. And Juniper um, innovates and leads in that space, not just by uh, being, you know, uh, the first in the in the world of uh, radio access. Uh, optimization through the rig, but also uh, in terms of some of the applications that we're bringing to the market. Okay. And these, these applications, these X apps and R apps that, that, that run on the, the RIC platform, are these being internally developed by Juniper or are you looking to partners or, you know, different, different, uh, uh, you know, if you put it this way, independent software vendors to come and fulfill some of that? Absolutely. The success of Oran depends on enabling uh, operators to select the best of breed, right? So uh, to that end, we have to support uh, any type of XAP or RAP 
no matter where it comes from. So XAP and our portability is absolutely strategic to the success of Warren, and we definitely support that through our SDK. Um, uh, but we're also developing our own XAPs as well, uh, which I think bring you know, significant mm-hmm. differentiation in the overall solution we, uh, you know, we bring to the market. No, yeah, okay. I wanted to, to move on to, to, you mentioned network slicing. That's obviously like a, a key capability in 5G, particularly if we think about enterprise services. Um, just uh, uh, to talk through a little bit how, how the RIC uh, will help uh, kind of enable operators to offer network slicing and over-the-air uh, kind of service guarantees and things like that. Right, Um I like to use uh, an analogy that may sound a little preposterous when it comes to network slicing, right? What is network slicing? It can be anything from uh, the familiar service chaining on one end of the spectrum to uh, what I call an MVNO on top of a you know highly distributed you know uh, tier one operator, including public cloud. So my goal and our goal at Juniper is to be able to programmatically, declaratively bring up an MVNO planet scale in a matter of a few hours, not months and years. That's a slice. That's the other end of the spectrum. So slice covers pretty much anything (laughs) that you can think of, right? Tenancy. So you need to have separate, uh, you know, different tenants, uh, uh, you know, with a strong SLA per tenant in terms of dimensioning, how many users each tenant, uh, what type of connection is that going to be an EMEB or a massive uh, machine-to-machine uh, communication type of um, a slice or the familiar ultra-low latency, high reliability uh, type of slice and everything in between those uh, 3GPP defined use cases, right? So a slice can be anything and we need to address segmentation, security, and above all, uh, SLA. And having the ability to do so in an end-to-end uh, fashion uh, is, you know, uh, makes the RIC an absolutely necessary component to be able to stretch the SLA to deliver the SLA over the spectrum. Um, so uh, we're taking a very, you know, broad view of network slicing. And as you're, I'm sure you know, uh, network slicing has been deemed to be the perhaps the most important use case in 5G. Um, And several analysts have attributed uh, or have attached, you know, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, of monetization that will come uh, through the benefit of network slicing networks for the operators in particular. Yeah, yeah. I mean... um the we uh, saw a great example recently. Actually, we had a we had an event on on Open RAN, and one of the keynote speakers was from a Japanese operator, KDDI, uh, and they showed a uh, a proof of concept they've been running with RAN slicing using a using a RIC, and they had a camera on um, on the front of a train running through this really deep kind of urban canyon in in Tokyo with gantries and metal and different moving mm-hmm. trains. On the one hand, they showed performance you know, just on best effort. And it was up and down. Every time you went past a train came by, the, the, the performance was dropping all, and bursting all over the place. They ran the same line, the same camera on the same train with a with a RIC-enabled application. And it was just a solid 30 megabits per second downlink, you know, barely any variation. Just a proof of concept, but but a really interesting one. You think what that could mean uh, in, in, in future. So in the ORAM, we have this uh, service management and orchestration layer. Um, I guess what I'm interested in is how, when you talk about these SLAs and and kind of supporting them end-to-end, how does the SMO tie in with the wider network orchestration picture? The SMO is critical in being able to realize, to provision a slice across across the three uh, semantic domains, which is the radio, the transport, and the core. And we have multiple incarnations of the transport. For example, we have the you know mid hall, front hall, back hall. Uh, we can have multiple instances of the core, um, and of course the radio you know can be realized uh, through the edge cloud. A lot of the radio components, and we count there probably in the thousands, maybe for tier one, tens of thousands of clouds. You know edge clouds that uh, host the DU, CU, etc. So how do you bring 
the benefit of network slicing across such an immense infrastructure and uh, bring the locality aspect of it. Because you may want to have a slice that is local to a particular region or it can be across the entire infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You need to deliver the SLA that ties how the rig works with the transport to ensure that you know SLA, the latency and the throughput are delivered across the infrastructure. You need to be able to uh, uh, provision again the core network functions to cope with the traffic and the dimensionality of the of the slice. So all of that comes together under the SMO, uh, which is a fairly complex problem, right? And you know, activity both in general yeah. across. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I look forward to seeing how this how this all evolves as you know as as, as Juniper and and your operator customers and the whole industry works through. Uh, some of the challenges and puts this to work. Um, Constantine with, with Juniper Networks, thanks very much.